Good Friday afternoon. It is September the 27th, 2019. An update for you here. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandagis on Hurricane Lorenzo and now Tropical Depression. Karen out in the Atlantic Basin. Now we'll look at climatology from 1966 to 2009. This is the start of the satellite era here. When we look at the average dates for different numbers of hurricanes. So we're at the fifth hurricane now with the development of Lorenzo several days ago. Typically within those years, the average is October 7th. So well ahead of schedule with that. In fact, Lorenzo peaked yesterday at a high end category four major hurricane. That makes it our third major hurricane. And typically the date of our third major hurricane isn't until the middle to even end of October. So we are well ahead of schedule and we are on our 12th name system. When we compare it with the forecast put out by the National Hurricane Center, NOAA, earlier in the season, 10 to 17 named storms, they said. We're already at 12, right in the middle of that. Five hurricanes so far at the low end of the five to nine is predicted so far, and major hurricanes right in the middle of that, too, so far with three. And think about it this way. We still have over a third of the way of the season to go. It goes all the way till November 30th before things really start to quiet on down. Out in the Atlantic Basin now, you can kind of point out the two features we'll be talking about. We have Karen right here, and there, of course, is Lorenzo. We'll start with the weaker of the two. Karen now down to a tropical depression, just dropping below the tropical storm criteria of 39 mile per hour winds. We're at 35 right now, and you can see it is struggling. Very hostile environment here, and as we switch it up and show you the visible satellite, you can still pick out the rotation of Karen, which is why it's still a depression, but eventually it is forecast to dissipate in the short term. It has encountered a block off to the north, high pressure, so it is going to start retrograding and pushing back towards the west, but dissipating as it does so by Sunday, looking like it'll just probably be a remnant low with winds of 30 miles per hour. You can see the GFS ensemble suite here showing a, the general trend off towards the west, but the storm will be weakening and likely just a tropical wave, if anything at all, if it ever makes it towards the east coast of Florida. Here's the bigger picture once again. We'll zoom in on Lorenzo, a massive storm and a very powerful one too. 140 mile per hour winds. It peaked yesterday and earlier today actually of 145 miles per hour. To be a cat five, you need 156. So pretty interesting out there with gusts up to 165. The overall size of it is very impressive. When we measure with all the outflow bands and all the way down to the south here, over 1,200 miles in diameter. For comparison, that's about the distance from Boston all the way to Miami. So if we were to move the system and drop it around the eastern seaboard, it'd almost cover the entire east coast of the United States. Very powerful system here. You see in the last couple of images of the infrared radar or infrared satellite, I should say, uh, likely going undergoing a eye wall replacement cycle. Very characteristic of very strong powerful systems out in the Atlantic or really anywhere in the world when they get that strong uh, and that impressive. Here's how it looks on the visible satellite imagery. I mean, just a textbook looking Atlantic hurricane. Now, there's been some records with this one as well. We're going to talk about in a second, but the overall wind field also impressive, almost as impressive as its overall size. Tropical storm force winds, look at that, stretch out 265 miles from the center. However, hurricane force winds rather narrow, 45 miles from the center there. Those are winds of over 74 miles an hour. Here's the record so far from Lorenzo. It became a category four storm farther east than any other storm on record, except for Julia back in 2010. It also had the lowest pressure than any other hurricane on record this far east. Now another storm, just another one add to the list that exhibited Rapid intensification. It had a jump in wind, sustained maximum winds of 85 miles per hour to 130 miles per hour in 24 hours. Now, the definition from the National Hurricane Center of rapid intensification, that's an increase in maximum sustained winds of at least 30 knots or around 34, 35 miles per hour in 24 hours. <clears throat> Lorenzo certainly did that with an increase of 45 miles per hour. So where is this storm headed? Pretty much off to the north and gradually weakening. It's going to be encountering um, cooling ocean temperatures as it gets farther in the North Atlantic, but it will eventually impact some land. So the Azores here, part of Portugal. Now, by the time it gets to say Tuesday night, early Wednesday, it'll be a category one storm with winds of 90 miles per hour passing by just to the northwest of the island chain there, likely bring some gusty winds and potentially uh, some widespread heavy rain too, because also as it gains latitude, it's also going to spread out a little bit more in terms of that wind field and the precipitation as well. Now, once we get rid of Karen and Lorenzo, what is next in the pipeline? 
I mentioned we still have a third of the season left. We're not done yet with the activity, and we turn our eyes towards um, Africa, African easterly waves. Now, we're watching a few of them here. Some of the models way far out in the long range show. Some of these um, waves could start to generate out near uh, the main development region in the Atlantic with some pretty good conditions there to be conducive for these to develop. So we'll watch that closely. We also keep our eyes at this time of the year towards Central America. It's something called the Central American Gyre, basically a big, broad overall circulation that sometimes can spin out uh, a tropical cyclone or two in the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll have to watch that as well as we head through the next couple of weeks. Some of the models starting to you know, be a little more active in that area. You can always find me on social media if you have any questions. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and I'm also on Twitter. Enjoy your weekend.